Good morning all. Myself Shweta Singh, Standard 10 Science teacher. I am going to start chapter 3 that is metals and non-metals. The topics and subtopics of this chapter that is introduction. Next is physical properties of metals and non-metals. Then occurrence of metals in that high reactivity elements, moderate reactivity elements and low reactivity elements. These are the subtopics. Then refining of metals, then corrosion and last is prevention of corrosion. First is introductory part of metals and non-metals. The metals can be distinguished from the non-metals on the basis of their chemical and physical properties. The property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is known as malleability. The property of metal by which it can be drawn into wires is known as ductility. The easiest way to start grouping substances is by comparing their physical properties. Comparing their physical properties, it means physical properties of metals and non-metals. Substances is by comparing their physical properties. Comparing their physical properties, it means physical properties of metals and non-metals. So metals, first we will discuss the physical properties of metals. Metals in their pure state have a shining surface. This property is known as metallic luster. Next, metals are generally hard in nature and this hardness of metals, it differs or it varies from metal to metal. Next, some metals that can be beaten into thin sheets, which property we had already discussed that is known as malleability. The ability of metals to be drawn into thin wires is known as ductility. Gold is most ductile metal. Now next is physical properties of metals and non-metals. Mercury, this is a metal having a low melting point and exist as a liquid at room temperature. Graphite, a form of carbon, this is a non-metal, has a high boiling point and is also a good conductor of electricity. So these are what? These are exceptional elements of metals and which can be categorized into metals and non-metals. The most common chemical property is the type of oxide that the element forms. Metal form oxides that are basic but non-metals form oxides which are acidic. For example, sulfur and carbon are both non-metals. They react with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. These compounds are both gases present in the air and which dissolve in rain water making acidic. All metal except mercury that exist as solid at room temperature. We have observed that metals have high melting points but gallium and cesium have very low melting points. These two metals will melt if you keep them on your palm. Iodine is a non-metal but it is lustrous. Different forms. Each form is known as an allotrope. Diamond and allotrope of carbon is the hardest natural substance known and has a very high melting and boiling point. Graphite, another allotrope of carbon, is a conductor of electricity. Alkali metals, that is lithium, sodium, potassium, that are so soft that they can be cut with the knife. They have low densities and low melting points. Most of the non-metals produce acidic oxide when dissolved in water. On the other hand, most metals give rise to basic oxide. You will be learning more about these metal oxide in the chemical properties of metals and non-metals. Now next is physical properties of metals and non-metals. In this 
slide we are going to discuss between differences between metals and non-metals. A reactivity series is a vital tool for a chemist. It helps us to understand the properties of metals and the differences between them. First is metals. These are solids at room temperature except mercury, non-metals. These exist in all the three states. Metals. These are very hard except sodium, non-metals. These are soft except diamond. Metals. These are malleable and ductile, non-metals. These are brittle in nature and can be break down into pieces. Metals. These are shiny and lustrous surface, non-metals. These are non-lustrous except <coughs> iodine. Metals. That is electropositive in nature, non-metals. Electronegative in nature. Metals having high densities. Non-metals having low densities. Next topic that is occurrence of metals. Mostly the metals occur in nature in a combined state. But sometimes they can also occur in the free state. A native metal is a metal found in its metallic state naturally. Either in pure form or in the form of an alloy. Most of the metals can't resist natural processes like oxidation, corrosion, etc. Some metals are found in the earth's crust in the free state. Some are found in the form of their compounds. The metals at the bottom of the activity series are the least reactive metals. They are often found in a free state. For example, gold, silver, Platinum and copper are found in the free state. Copper and silver are also found in the combined state as they are sulphide or oxide ores. The metals at the top of the activity series, for example, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium and aluminium are so reactive that they are never found in nature as free elements. The metals in the middle of the activity series, example zinc, iron, lead, etc. are moderately reactive. They are found in the earth's crust mainly as etc. are moderately reactive. They are found in the earth's crust mainly as oxides, sulfides or carbonates. We will find that the ores of many metals are oxides in nature. This is because oxygen is a very reactive element and is very abundant on the earth. Thus, on the basis of reactivity, we can group, we can categorize the metals into the following three states or categories. First is metals of low reactivity. Next, metals of medium reactivity. Next, metals of high reactivity. Different, different techniques are to be used for obtaining the metals falling in each category. Several steps are also involved in the extraction of pure metal from their ores. First we will discuss that is metals having high reactivity. Metals more reactive than carbon such as aluminium are extracted by electrolysis or electrolysis process. While metals less reactive than carbon such as iron may be extracted by reduction with carbon. As gold is so unreactive, it is found as the native metal and not as a compound. It does not need to be chemically separated. The metals in the moderate reactivity. Metals such as iron, zinc, lead, copper etc. are in the middle of the reactivity series. These are moderately reactive metals and are usually present as sulphide or carbonates. A metal is obtained from its ore by the process of reduction or by electrolysis. The metals in the middle of the activity series are moderately reactive. These are usually present as sulphide or carbonates in nature. It is easier to obtain a metal from its oxide as compared to its sulfide and carbonates. Therefore, prior to reduction, the metal sulfides and carbonates must be converted into metal oxide. 
The sulfide ores are converted into oxides by heating strongly in the presence of excess air. This process is known as roasting. The carbonate ores are changed into oxides by heating strongly in limited air. This process is known as calcination. The metal oxide are then reduced to the corresponding metals by using suitable reducing such as carbon. Besides using carbon to reduce metal oxide to metals, sometimes displacement reactions can also be used. The highly reactive metals such as sodium, calcium, aluminium, etc. are used as reducing agents because they can displace metals of lower reactivity from their compounds. Now next is metals of low reactivity. Metals that are not very reactive are placed low in the reactivity series. These metals can be reduced to metals by heating alone. For example, mercury is procured from its ore, cinnabar that is HGS by the process of heating. Copper can also be obtained from its sulphide ore by heating. Now next is refining of metals. In metallurgy, refining consists of purifying an impure metal. It is to be distinguished from other processes such as smelting and calcination in that those two involve a chemical change to the raw material whereas in refining the final material is usually identical chemically to the original ore. Only it is pure. Now next and last topic is corrosion. Corrosion is a natural process that converts a refined metal into a more chemically stable form such as oxide, hydroxide or sulfide. It is the gradual destruction of materials, usually a metal, by chemical and or electrochemical reaction with their environment. Now prevention of corrosion is there. We can prevent corrosion by selecting the right that is metallic type, protective coating, environmental measures, sacrificial coating, then corrosion inhibitors, then design modification. These are the several factors. These are the several preventions we can say for the prevention of At last, thank you students and take care.